everybody, I'm Beeps Kelly. Welcome back to another fashion edition. Today we have more wedding guests to take a look at. Some good, some horrible. Including what guests wore to Meghan Markle's wedding, some of the randos that she invited, real randos, people who were strangers that she invited to her wedding. We're gonna take a look at what they wore. We're also gonna take a look at just a couple of looks from the Jordanian royal wedding guest list and Pippa's wedding. If you guys like these videos, be sure to let me know in the comments and by clicking the like button, and I will do Catherine Princess of Wales's wedding and maybe a few other guests from these weddings. Dive in a little bit deeper if you guys like them. You have to let me know. But before we dive into all of the people who were supposed to and not supposed to be at Meghan Markle and Prince Harry's wedding, I have a quick note for you guys. If you want to skip ahead from the talkie talks, you go right ahead. There are timestamps and chapters below. So when we have special occasions like weddings, sometimes we end up with a snazzy dress. Also, it's summer. Maybe we're wearing halter tops and things of that nature. And it can get very pricey to try to find bras for all of those different occasions. And it's difficult to get a good fit on a strapless bra or a halter bra or a solution bra, as they are sometimes called. I have a bra video I will link somewhere going over the best types of bras for you. And I firmly believe that you should stick with the basics to be sure that you get a good bra that helps your back and helps your body and your silhouette overall, first and foremost. But a great and inexpensive way to be able to wear those special occasion outfits and dresses or halter tops or strapless outfit is to buy one of these kits that is boob tape. I was sent this kit by a company called VBY. It's not sponsored or anything like that, but they just sent me this kit to try out and share with you guys. And it works really great. You get these little nipple covers and then you get tape in two different colors and you can use these to create a bra no matter what sort of strapless halter silhouette dress or top you have so instead of needing to get several different types of bras for these special occasion dresses and tops you can just buy one of these kits and create with the tape the sort of bra that you need it includes an instruction kit with lots of great graphics to show you exactly how to use it and what sort of shape you should put your boob tape in there is a link in the description if you would like to save on an order from this company if you choose to shop there Let's start with Princesses Beatrice and Eugenie as guests at Meghan Markle and Prince Harry's wedding. A very embellished dress. I have mixed feelings about it. I like the silhouette. I want to like it. The waistline is great. I don't mind the sleeves or, you know, the actual base design of the dress. It's just these little poof balls remind me too much of like a craft project. So it's bothering me a little bit. Or like a bathroom rug, maybe. I just don't care for the decorative aspect of this dress and the approach that they took with those little balls. Otherwise, I like it in general and the color is very pretty. Eugenia actually really liked this one on her. It could have been a little bit more flattering for her figure. It could have tucked in a little bit better at the waist because the pocket placement isn't necessarily the best for her, but it shows off her lovely toned legs. And I think overall the look was a win. It's just not perfect. Sophie has one of the most amazing things I think she has ever worn. It's so interesting and different from anything she's ever worn before that I have seen. I think it's lovely. The uh, hat, the skirt, the crop top, it all flows together really nicely. I absolutely love her updo as well is just perfect. The feathers and everything on that hat have a nice shape. And I just think this was really nice. I know it's not for everybody. What do you guys think of this one? It was different. And by the way, I think that this is just further evidence of uh, one of Meghan Markle's many lies that people weren't allowed to wear the same color because all of these people are wearing like teals and powder blues and light blues in some of these pictures. Even Autumn had on teal that day. And so, you know, they do coordinate. And I think that lately they've been coordinating colors a lot more to just show everybody that no, we don't mind if we match colors and no, we don't mind if we have engagements on the same day put those rumors to rest. Anyway, I do think Sophie's skirt could have been a tad bit shorter, but in general, I really like it. Okay, Camilla looks absolutely perfect. This is a wonderful color for her. The hat is nice and fluffy looking. I thought it was a great look. 
perfect length, fabulous. Catherine, Princess of Wales, also looking perfect. This was a perfect choice for her. She had recently had Prince Louis, so it allowed just the silhouette of the dress, the skirt part of the dress, to just flow over her figure so that as she was going through all of those body changes after having a baby, she didn't have to worry about last-minute fittings as much as she would have with a different sort of a dress. So it was a really smart, strategic choice as well. And I love her hat. Those flowers are just beautiful. Little Charlotte there looking so precious. I also thought that Doria looked quite nice. This pale green with the florals along the bottom was a good choice for her. I like Pippa's dress okay, but it's not my favorite. The shoulders are just a tad too wide, so it's almost maybe a half size too big, maybe it just needed to be pulled in just a tad, or sometimes when you're having a dress tailored, there's only so far they can pull it in before it will create gaping or something of that nature in a different place. So perhaps it was the best they could do. But what I really am, is throwing me off about this is it had this sort of hidden panels along the pleating of the skirt that break up the floral pattern with a sort of nude tan color on the inside of those folds. And I just don't particularly care for that. That. But the color overall is nice and the hat matches lovely. It's just not my favorite approach to a skirt. Anne's dress here, I'm not a huge fan of. It, it, it resembles a dressing gown a little bit for me. The colors were a little bit heavy in my opinion. I think this was a springtime wedding, so perhaps it wasn't the best option, but it did have a sort of iridescent effect to it, so perhaps it was a bit uh, better in person. It's just maybe a bit wintry. Victoria and David looked absolutely dashing as always. I absolutely loved her look. Tom Hardy and his wife looked great too, although her dress also looks a little bit autumnal in its vibe or wintry, but I do love the silhouette, the puffed sleeves, and the ruffling along the bottom it creates a really great balance and sort of balances out that pattern a little bit, gives it somewhere to go up to that hat there. It looks really nice. On to Priyanka Chopra. I think it looks a little bit wrinkly, this sort of blazer skirt dress situation. It's almost an unprofessional looking finish. I think it would have been very interesting if the fabric was not creating bunching and wrinkling. It could have been really cool because it's very interesting the way that it's cut across the top. I do think it maybe would have made a better fashion shoot look or like magazine cover than a wedding guest outfit, but you know, this is your chance sometimes to wear something absolutely fabulous, so I don't blame her for it. She did wear something to the reception that was absolutely stunning. It was this glittery Dior gown that just did her all the favors in the world and looked so stunning. Absolutely love it. She might get her own fashion edition too sometime coming up because she has some really great fashion sense as well. And then look here, these ladies all look really lovely, actually. I absolutely love the polka dot dress. It reminds me of something Princess Catherine owns as well. So the lack of actual friends and family present at this wedding was just strange, I have to say it. I understand in some situations people don't have huge groups of friends or they don't stay in touch with all their past co-workers and classmates. Some people are true loners and it doesn't mean anything and it's not nefarious in any way, shape, or form. But this just was a little bit weird because in those situations you just invite less you just you don't create some big guest list what megan chose to do was create a huge guest list of celebrities and it was a bit presumptuous of like like leveling up or like now i'm gonna you're gonna want to be friends with me i'm gonna invite you to the wedding or something i don't know it just came off a little bit odd and i think it was the beginning of people's red flagging if they didn't already have a red flag going up with Meghan Markle, I think the, the guest list and the amount of strangers she invited threw people off. What do you guys think about that? T. I don't know. Anyway, back to the looks. So this is where it all started with Oprah. I do not think Meghan Markle knew Oprah before this. Do you guys? Somebody tell me if I'm wrong, but I think that this was the first time that she and Oprah began to connect was the wedding invite. And I'm not sure if Oprah started courting her first, like maybe during the engagement, or if Meghan Markle started courting Oprah and invited her to the wedding. I don't know what came first, the chicken or the egg, you guys, fill me in. Allegedly, Oprah had been annoyed that she had never landed a royal interview. But that kind of makes sense because she did more she has a history of doing more like shock value sorts of interviews much of her career things that were like really sensationalized she had a lot of product affiliations and she was very commercialized endorsing a lot of various you know 
products and things of that nature, weight loss supplements, vitamins, with that sensationalism attached to it. So it makes sense that the royal family wouldn't necessarily choose somebody of that nature to do interviews and grant access to. They gravitate towards like career journalists and writers and serious reporters. And that's fair in my opinion. They have a real role in the government. You know, the monarchy is a big deal and they have to be careful about who they grant interviews to or give access to. They do. And so I think that it was fair, but I think that, you know, she really wanted to create that line of communication with Meghan Markle as soon as she heard about it, probably. Anyway, back to the looks. I'm sorry, trying to stay focused here. I actually really like Oprah's look this day. I really love the lacy ruffling in the like double skirt effect. I think it's really pretty. It's a great choice for her figure, but her hat is a little cowboy hat-ish. I didn't really like her hat. Carrie Mulligan looked amazing. I absolutely love her dress. I do wish that that black belt was tied in somehow with maybe like a black band along her accessories, like maybe a black part of the purse or something of that nature, or a black hat maybe would have been nice. But the dress is just beautiful and ethereal and lovely. Cressida, once again, smiling and happy. I just really like her. But this was definitely a loud choice. It was a bit questionable. Maybe it was a bit busy. But she was celebrating the end of involvement with Mean and Cranky Harold. So give her a break. Idris looks wonderful here. But again, his wife is not wearing something I like. Sometimes she really hits at home. Like at Ascot this year, she wore something incredible. But this is one of two times recently that I saw a picture of her in something that was just questionable. It reminds me of maybe an airline stewardess or an oversized cardigan. I don't like it. It didn't give her shape any sort of flattering moment or time to shine. It was just sort of underwhelming perhaps. This strapless plunge here that this guest wore was a bad choice. A bad choice for the church wedding, a bad choice in general, and it's not necessarily all that flattering anyway of a dress, so I think that was a, a big miss. Serena Williams, however, big home run. This is a perfect approach to her body type. She's got a very athletic body type. She's a little bit curvy, and so the diagonal lines and the swooping and whatnot without adding volume is a excellent approach and then her hat just added a little bit of height although i will say about her hairstyle it was maybe not a practical choice because i read that they stayed up all night long putting these braids in for her i would never choose braids over sleep or hairstyle over sleep i'm a mom it's like sleep is the priority here people you can't do that <laughs> It's just a little frivolous, but it looked really cool and the effect was awesome and I thought her hair looked beautiful, just not sure about spending all night doing it. Catherine, Princess of Wales. This is from Pippa's Wedding and I do not like it because it has this sort of droopy effect to the bust. I like every other part of it, but the droopy styling of the bust is something I can't stand and it was really popular there for a short while, but I just think it's a mistake. I don't think you should have that sort of a cut around a bust. It just doesn't give a very nice effect in my opinion. I prefer a straight line under the bust. That's just me. What do you guys think? Overall, that silhouette and dress was really nice and the color was really great too. It's just the seams around the bust that I didn't like. It's kind of baggy and frumpy almost looking, but everywhere else it looked fine. Don't forget, if you guys like these special fashion editions focusing on the royal wedding guests, don't forget to click the like button and let me know in the comments if you would like me to do Catherine Princess of Wales' guests too. All right, so Princess Beatrice and Catherine, Princess of Wales, attended the royal wedding in Jordan earlier this year, and they both had really nice looks. I will say, the reception dress was stunning, but I really prefer her in things that have a little bit of a flair to add to her hips a little bit. Her proportions are actually really balanced, so if she adds volume at her shoulders like this here, it can throw her off a little bit into an inverted triangle shape. Nothing wrong with that, but it can make her hips look just a little narrow to her figure, so it's better for her silhouette and balancing visually to wear gowns that have some element of volume near those hips. Beatrice, poor thing, struggled with her hair as the stylist had given her something she didn't like, so she had to modify her hair last minute, but she still managed to make it look all right. Good for her to get on with it. 
I was not a fan of the embellishment coming down to the bust like this, as I think these sorts of placements can look a little less flattering, like that last look we saw from Catherine Princess of Wales at Pippa's wedding. It's that same sort of effect that almost gives a drooping sort of look to the eye just from afar. I would prefer it to just go over continuously across the bust. That embellishment and up the shoulders would have looked really nice in, instead, in my personal opinion. But the gather before her sleeves hits at her waistline, so this dress enhances her waistline really, really nicely. It was perfect sleeve placement with that fluted flared sleeve. And to the wedding, she wore this gorgeous baby blue dress with a sheer overlay that was full of sparkle and lace and just absolutely gorgeous. The contrasting black belt was great for showing off her waistline, but it may have been just a tad bit big in the shoulders for her. Nothing to complain about, though. Also, shocker, Edo stays behind her to let her greet first. What if he had put his hand on her shoulder to casually push first like Meghan Markle did to Harry? This is just how it is, Meghan. You let the real royal go first. The dress that Kate wore to the wedding was also beautiful. It had that similar ethereal flowy vibe that Beatrice chose also. This flowy skirt and billowy sleeves, just so lovely. The color was a great choice as those blushy tones are muted. For somebody who's such a showstopper like Catherine, to choose something that's a muted color is like a really nice kind approach and really great etiquette actually. It's so polite. It's a very pretty dress and it looked really lovely. It truly did, especially strong rolling through the garden here. The movement of the dress is so lovely. And also notice both of these ladies chose things that were high necklined and not revealing in any sort of a major way because that is respectful of the culture in Jordan. So that was a really smart choice as well. And this just shows that diplomacy goes a long way when you're in a role like that. That is all we have time for today, you guys. Again, if you like these, I will do another one later this month on Catherine Princess of Wales' wedding guests. Otherwise, we'll be back to another fashion edition next week. I will see you guys again in the next video. I'll have some more bonus videos coming out soon. Thank you so much for being here with me today. If you are curious about anything I'm wearing or any products I used, check the products tab below. Please don't forget to subscribe, click the like button, and share this video with anybody you think would enjoy it. It helps out this channel so much, and I appreciate it more than you know. Thank you for being here with me. I hope that you have a happy day today, and I will see you next time. Bye!